this time I'd like to call the meeting of the Standing County Board of Commissioners regular meeting for no May 6, 2013 to order at 7 o'clock. ask everyone if it would please take a seat and uh, we'll get the meeting started. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone here, recognize our media. I think we have someone on Channel 14. We've got uh, radio and the media and also with uh, the media with Salisbury Post and uh, we welcome you as well and those folks who will be watching this uh, on uh, closed circuit uh, at a later date. Uh, at this time, I will ask uh, Commissioner Dennis for an invocation. It's going to be a little bit different tonight. I'm going to ask everyone for a moment of silence to either pray or have reflection. Bow our heads, please. Thank you, or amen. Thank you, Commissioner Dennis, for that. Uh, for some time, I have contemplated that the commissioners should do the Pledge of Allegiance before meetings, and after consulting with my fellow commissioners, they uh, concurred. Tonight, I would like to start that tradition uh, with the Board of Commissioners, and to do that, I have a commentary that was written by uh, late comedian Red Skelton some years ago, uh, back before some of the phrases were added to the Pledge of Allegiance. and. Uh, when he was a child in a history class, the, they recited the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, and it occurred to the teacher that they were just saying words and really didn't know the meanings of the words or the phrases. And at this time, I would like for us to all stand and face the flag, and I'm going to come down to the podium so you, it can be heard when I read it. And I will read the pledge and, and put in the words of the commentary if you'll, uh, you'll and indulge me to do that. So at this time, if you'll please stand, uh, face the flag, and then I will read the pledge. I, me, an individual, a committee of one, pledge, dedicate all my worldly good to give without self-pity, allegiance, my love and my devotion, to the flag, our standard, old glory, a symbol of courage, and wherever she waves, there is respect, because your loyalty has given her a dignity that shouts, freedom is everybody's job. Of the united, that means that we have all come together states, individual communities that have united into 50 great states, 50 individual communities with pride and dignity and purpose, all divided by imaginary boundaries, yet united to a common cause, and that's love of country. Of America and to the republic, a republic, a sovereign state in which power is invested in representatives chosen by the people to govern. And the government is the people, and it's from the people to the leaders, not from the leaders to the people for which it stands, one nation under God, meaning so blessed by God, indivisible, incapable of being divided, with liberty, which is freedom, the right of power for one to live his own life without fears, threats, or any sort of retaliation, and justice, the principle and qualities of dealing with fairly with others, for all, and that's for all, which means all men and women, it's as much your country as it is mine. Thank you. Thank you for your indulgence in that. And at this time, our first agenda item, uh, well, first of all, we need to approve or adjust the agenda. Do we have any adjustments? Uh, add-ons to the agenda. Okay, we've asked to add on the uh, House Bill 1005 that's up for discussion. We'll put that as item number six. We'll move item six to an item seven. That's the consent agenda. Anything else? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to uh, accept the agenda. Uh, Agenda is approved. Uh, motion by Commissioner Dennis, seconded by Commissioner Shudo. All in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. And the ayes have it. Thank you. 
Our first agenda item is a retirement awards presentation. We have two gentlemen that have been with us a while and retiring. And I'll ask Mr. Uh, Clarence Beach first if he'll come up to the table up here and we'll honor him. And the commissioners will join me. Our next agenda item is the approval of the JCPC funding allocation for fiscal year 2013-14. Uh, the presenter will be just Jackie DeSantis, who is the board chair at JCPC. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you very much. Good evening. Most of you know me as the attorney for the Department of Social Services. So I have a double hat here, and I've been the JCPC chair for a couple of years now. I provide you with some forms and I had to revise those forms. They were changed, so the new additions for replace 
up there for you. The, as you know, the JCPC funds are federal funds that are slotted to go to the, in, through the state and then down to the counties. And our allotment is 174,070. And then the board, our board meets and we determine how to divide those funds up through requests for proposals, which were provided to us. The division, as you see there, is the restitution program, which of course is mandated by statute. We have to have that program. The youth, youth development initiatives, which is uh, the Lyft Academy, which is working actually mostly out of the community college and the E.E. Waddell Center. And then the Rowan County Youth Services Bureau. That's, we had to go out of county for that particular service. It is sex offender services. And there's not a county agency that treats or does sex offender evaluations, and that's for youth. So if you look at the local in kind, that's actually where the county provides the office space and then, of course, the volunteer program. The in kind services would be like the restitution program is actually housed out of the courthouse and the development initiatives, as I stated, is out of E.E. Waddell. They also use the community college also to provide some services. The Youth Services Bureau, the Rowan County Youth Services Bureau, if they don't use those funds, they will return those funds, all of those funds. The other form I provided is the, the council certification, which you all have to approve. Pursuant to the North Carolina statute 143B846, the last page is the members that have to be that have to be on this board pretty much. So as you see, Andy Lucas is on the board. The, so they can either be on the board themselves or they can have a designee. So those are the members as we have, that we have now. We're only missing a couple at this point, which we hope to fill this coming year. But at this point, I'm just asking that you approve the budget that the JCPC board approved and that you also approve for the next coming year the uh, council certification or those members of the council and do you have any questions you want to have a question or comment no question mr chair i move that we uh, adopt this budget and this uh, list of council members I have a motion for commissioner dennis to approve I have a, i'm sorry commissioner donovan to approve and a second by commissioner dennis any further discussion hearing none all in favor say aye, aye. those opposed no and the ayes have it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. And our next agenda item is a presentation of the Red Locust Red Cross uh, Comprehensive Transportation Plan. Uh, presenter is Mrs. Dana Stuginke from the Rocky River RPO. Uh, and is Reuben? Reuben is not here tonight. Not I'll with be us, doing so the presentation solo. Welcome. Well, thank you all for um, letting me come and speak before you all. I'm Dana Stujanki with the Rocky River Rural Planning Organization. And I'm just giving you, um, uh, letting you know that we're starting this planning process with for Red Cross and Locust. Let's see if I can get this, okay. I don't know, it's not showing on the TV, is that okay? Okay. So basically the Stanley County Comprehensive Transformation Plan was done about a year and a half ago and the city of Locust and the town of Red Cross decided not to uh, adopt their portion. So we're going back and redoing that section. Um, and part of that has pieces of unincorporated Stanley County. And that's why we're here before you all tonight to let you know that this is um, gonna be underway. And the state has mandates that all areas in the state have some sort of comprehensive transportation plan to guide um, local local um, organizations, local groups, as well as um, NCDOT to um, have a understanding and goals of the long range transportation plans. So I'll just quick um, process. So the comprehensive transportation plan is the CTP. And we're gonna kick this off. We're gonna have a stakeholders group. We're gonna have a big um, survey for the public in that area of the county. We've done a lot of data collection already because this plan was done about 18 months ago, so we'll use a lot of that good data. And then we will come out with draft plan, we'll do the public workshops, and all the jurisdictions involved in the plan will come before them and ask that it be adopted. The RPO endorses that, 
ultimately will um, go before the Board of Transportation, and then the goal of all of this is to get projects from the Transportation Improvement Program, which is how roads get funded in the state of North Carolina. So benefits of doing the Comprehensive Transportation Plan, basically we're doing this comprehensive plan, we're creating partnerships with NCDOT and stakeholders across the, um, across the communities that we're working in. We're trying to incorporate land use planning, which is key to doing transportation planning, and we're also trying, um, with the assistance of NCDOT, to incorporate their goals and objectives, like the Strategic Highway Corridor, which was the big sticking point um, for the Locust Red Cross plan. And it's important to keep in mind that um, as you go through this planning process, it's you're not going to have the alignment settled until it, the projects get funded and they go through the rigorous environmental process. And that's really when the actual design and alignments get um, completed. So, you know, we put out the best information we can and then it's refined as um, projects get funded. So, um, what makes up a CTP? We've got um, highways, bicycle, pedestrian, rail, and public transportation are all the modes that NCDOT covers now. We're, it's not just about highways. They look at um, existing roads, whether I should say they look at recommendations of just keeping things as is, needs improvements, or recommended new alignments. And they don't look at every road. They look at um, a network of roads, and they don't look at jurisdictional roads. So the city of Locust owns their own network of roads. They don't do analysis on that. Um, in addition, the state looks at their different highway categories, which is freeway, expressway, boulevard, and major thoroughfares and minor thoroughfares. And we don't have express um, freeways in our area of the RPO, but we do have expressways and boulevards and thoroughfares and um, major and minor thoroughfares. Um, the products, and you all probably have all seen these products, they're the highway map, the bicycle map, the rail and public transportation map, and the pedestrian map, and the technical, the technical report is not adopted, so these are those four maps are the ones that you're going to see at the public when we draft the plan and then at the public workshops, and the report comes, comes later. And um, I know that was quick. Ruben Crummy, again, he apologized for not being here tonight. This is his presentation, so I hope I did it justice. We, in terms of stakeholders, we have Michael Sandy, who is um, staff at the county. He's going to be this um, representing staff at our stakeholder meetings. You know, I'm more than happy if the county wants to put another person on the, um, the stakeholder group to do that. We're going to probably have our next meeting um, at the end of May, and then this process is going to probably run about 12 months or so. So uh, do you all have any specific questions for me that I could help answer? Anyone have a question or comment? Um, Danny, the, uh, the, the stakeholders, though, will also include the other jurisdictions, right? Absolutely. So it won't be just the county represented on that stakeholder group. Right. We have um, folks from um, both the city of Locust, the um, Red Cross, and we're going to the city of Locust's meeting on Thursday night, and next Monday we'll be in front of Red Cross. So we're doing the same kickoff, and it worked really well when we did this for Albemarle. We came in front of the city of Albemarle's board several times during the process just to keep them, everyone in the loop of all the different projects, and so we're going to intend, you'll probably see me and Ruben um, throughout this process as well. Anyone else? Thanks, sir. Thank you, Diane. Our next agenda item is a planning zoning uh, public hearing, and Michael Sandy, our director of planning zoning, will be the presenter. Welcome, Michael. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, before you tonight is a public hearing. We're requesting a public hearing to um, give you an update and to possibly adopt a resolution for the county line. Um, since our last meeting uh, on March 4th, we uh, la launched a um, web page to inform the public about the county line and information about what changes may be along the line. On uh, March 25th, we had a public input session um, in the city of Locust, which is close to the county line, and notified all property owners along, along the line, which is about 130 different parcels. 
Um, on all, April 15th, the Cabarrus County adopted a resolution, which is very, uh, which is very similar to what you see, and I think you did a good copy of the sign resolution in your packet. Um, and today we're asking for Stanley County's adoption of the same resolution, um, which is before you for consideration. Be glad to answer any questions. Um, I've been here a couple times to explain what the county line is about, and I'd be glad to give you some history. Anyone have a question or comment? I just think, I don't know if we need to read this uh, resolution or not, but you might just want to explain a little more about what's going on okay. as far as uh, this, is the, this is the county line between Cabarrus and Stanley counties okay. along the river. And, uh, just, sure. I don't think you need to read it, but just uh, a few highlights. Sure, this, uh, this line was the line was established in 1762 when the counties of Mecklenburg and Montgomery were divided. Um, it has not been verified since 1841, um, and we want to have the North Carolina Geodetic Survey to establish the line as it was originally mapped um, at that time. We're following General Statutes 153A-18, where the two counties can hold public hearings and um, notify properties along the line and establish the line to an agreed, agreed point. Um, and we are at that point to have it resurveyed. Um, on and reading part of the resolution on or after January 14th, um, a lot of the uh, documents and papers and instruments required to be recorded, recorded in the proper county will be done based on the new line. Um, effective January 1st of 2015, all real property in the area um, a common boundary line should be listed and assessed in the county which it is then uh, located. Uh, no course of action of criminals shall be located, uh, criminal actions involving persons or property uh, shall be uh, carried over after January 1st of 2014 in the proper county. Um, I'll skip a few of those. Uh, some of those are very similar about the jury commission. Um, the education board of educations for each county um, have worked out where in this resolution where the, if you have a student that would be affected by that line where it's properly located they can continue going to the county schools and such that's under number seven um, we also talked about the fire districts how that would be corrected as of january 15th uh, january 1st of 2015 and we're also, both counties are going to submit to the General Assembly for ratification, a complete uh, survey determined by the North Carolina Geodetic Survey and agreed upon by both counties. Be glad to answer any questions. Do I have a question now? And, excuse me, how many residences are going to be affected? And obviously what you just read to us indicates that uh, if someone lived in Stanley County before and the line changes and it puts them in Cabarrus County, then technically they will attend C Cabarrus County Schools, the same for fire districts, the same for jury duty. Okay. So um, how many people, I mean, how many residences were actually affected by the line change? We had, I believe we had um, eight residences that were actually affected that would actually change. Um, some were already split, you know, there were some close calls and things like that. Some of those weren't, you know, weren't affected. We did have those eight that would, that would change. Um, we also had, we. From what we could tell, based on those addresses, we didn't have any students in schools at those addresses that would change that we need to continue on. But we wanted to put that in here. This is a very similar wordage to when Orange and Alamance County had the same scenario. Okay, it sounds like it, the uh, the change wasn't very disruptive to a lot of the, the people out there, so that's, that's good to know. Thank you. Am I correct in, uh, when I read this that uh, the uh, students, if there were students, if they were in Stanley County and ended up in Cabarrus County, they could continue in Stanley County until they graduated and vice versa. And they, they worked that out with the school system. So there'd be no uh, having to pay uh, tuition for attending a different school in a different county if that happened. So, uh, and siblings uh, also correct. were uh, grandpas and everything. Right, that's correct. Anyone else? At this time, I declare the public hearing open. Anyone wishing to speak for or against? Please come forward, state your name, and tell us if you're for or against this uh, resolution and survey of the, of the county line. Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. What's the pleasure of the board? I have a request, a uh, motion by Commissioner Donovan to uh, 
accept the resolution second by Commissioner Shudo. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. And the ayes have it. Thank you very much. Uh, Michael, you have another one, Board of Adjustment, Board of Adjustments appointments. Yes, sir. Thank you. I have a couple of uh, board members who are uh, terms are expiring, uh, so need to be renewed. We have four members who are expired June 30th of this year. Uh, Ms. Kathy Bennett served two terms and does not wish to be reappointed. Uh, Grover Stewart has served two terms for a total of six years, does not wish to be reappointed. Mr. Richard Cosgrove has served one full term and a partial term for a total of five years. Uh, we have Ms. Uh, Rebecca Car Carter, who is an alternate, has served one term for a total of three years. These board members have been very diligent in their service to the Board of Adjustment. We would request that you reappoint Mr. Cosgrove for another term of three years to expire June 30th, 2016. Reappoint Ms. Rebecca Carter for another three-year term to expire June 30th of 16 and move her as a regular member. Move alternate Buddy Houston Clark from alternate member to a regular member to replace Grover Stewart's seat. Um, and then we need to appoint two new alternates to serve a total of three-year terms to expire in 16. If we do not have people named at this time, but we do have so some I can, time before. I can make a recommendation that uh, maybe we appoint those that are here and uh, that have recommended and that we uh, hold off and appoint two alternates after we look at our uh, volunteer list and, and get it out to the public. Okay. Uh, entertain a motion. Motion, motion by Commissioner Dennis to... Uh, appoint and reappoint these and hold off on the alternates to another time second by commissioner shudo any further discussion hearing none all in favor say aye those opposed no and the ayes have it thank you very much yes go ahead i'm sorry i just wanted to say we don't have any current applications on file for those so if you know folks who are interested in being alternates on the board of adjustment Please work with them, get them to submit the applications, and they can do that online, or they can call the uh, Tyler and the clerk's office, and we can do that for you. So. All you folks out there listening, you heard that. If you want to serve the Board of Adjustments, fill out a volunteer <laughs> application. <laughs> Our next agenda item is consideration of proclamation declaring Saturday, May 11, 2013, as Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive Day, and our presenter is uh, Commissioner Donovan. We uh, received this uh, proclamation from Roger Thomas, who is the executive director of the Stanley County Christian Ministries, and he's asked for the county commissioners to consider adopting this proclamation. And if you don't mind, I'll read it. Yeah, please, Mr. Chair. Step Out Hunger Food Drive Day, May 11, 2013. Whereas every year on the second Saturday in May, letter carriers across the country collect non-perishable food as part of the nation's largest one-day food drive distributing the donations to local food banks. And whereas the Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive is just one example of how letter carriers work to make a difference in the lives of those they serve, since the pilot drive was held in 1991, more than a billion pounds of food have been collected. And whereas we would like to recognize all letter carriers for their hard work and their commitment to their communities, all of the food collected in Stanley County stays in Stanley County and we support carriers' efforts to help those in need in our community. Now, therefore, we, the county commissioners of Stanley County, North Carolina, by the authority vested in us, do hereby proclaim Saturday, May 11, 2013, as Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive Day in the county of Stanley, North Carolina, and encourage the citizens of our community to support the food drive by placing non-perishable non food items in or near your mailbox on food drive day. Your letter carrier will pick it up while delivering the mail, and together we can all help to feed Stanley's hunger. Thank you, Commissioner Donovan. Uh, I think it was a very good program, and uh, I hope that we will support this. What's the pleasure of the board? I make a motion that we uh, uh, adopt this proclamation. I have a motion by Commissioner Donovan, a second by Commissioner Dennis. All, all in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. And the ayes have it. Our next agenda item is the House Bill uh, 1005 that uh, Representative Burr has uh, introduced and uh, has asked for input from the citizens uh, about this bill, and uh, it's open for discussion at this time. I'm the one headed at the agenda, and I don't quite understand why we need to go to a seven-member board all of a sudden. Uh, I talked to him today, and 
still couldn't get quite a straight answer to the real reasoning for it. I didn't know we were having any trouble. So, uh, I still don't understand. I just, I just, I'm not in favor of it. And, uh, I don't know how the other members feel, but I, I'm just not in favor of it. Anyone else? Um, I, I agree with Commissioner Dennis. Um, we have five, and that seems to be working fine. If we add two more commissioners, that's going to cost between thirty to forty thousand dollars a year to our budget. And then also, if you look at his part about districting, we have me and um, Commissioner Donovan live in Albemarle. You and Mr. Morton, uh, Commissioner Morton, live out live out west, and Gene's been representing the North for a long for a long time. So we have we have representation all across the county. I think Jan Ladder, the previous commissioner, lived down toward the south. So, and now we have two places. So you know it's naturally been voted that way, where we have representation all around the country. And one thing I don't like about having sub districts, we are Stanley County, and I think everybody's in it together. So I, I would be against it, also. Anyone else? I make a comment on the thing. I have no opposition to the to the bill. I discussed this with Representative Burr, and um, it does provide representation for four different areas in the county. Um, there's no one really from west of Big Bear Creek now on that board. Um, we are we are elected at large, and there will be th still be three at large members of the board present. Um, these persons of board are appointed for the uh, districts to be serving two-year terms. Now, the only opposition I have to the bill as presented is that it has it becomes effective immediately, and that means according to uh, my conversation with Representative Burr, this board will be appointing those two members, and I asked him, I said, uh, I can't support the bill under those circumstances because I don't feel like that's quite fair do that, but at the same time, I would uh, ask him, would you rewrite the bill to make it effective uh, at the uh, 2014 election? And he told me he would certainly consider doing that. So if, if that happens, I would certainly support the bill. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I would just um, echo some of the comments. Um, I think that right now, Stanley County is a small enough county where five members, uh, it seems to me, serves uh, it well. Um, I have to admit that, that uh, probably within a year or two after I got elected first in 2006, that the idea of expanding the board uh, was more attractive. But I think after having seen it work, you know, from from the position that I've been in, I would I would prefer that it stay the same. If in fact it were to change, though, I think there are some things about the current bill, just like uh, uh, Commissioner Morton has pointed out that I would certainly hope that we have an opportunity to weigh in on before it becomes law. Um, and they, they're up there every day. We only meet every two weeks, sometimes every, every three. So I hope that we would have an opportunity to weigh in on something before it becomes effective. I, I don't like the idea of commissioners serving every two years, primarily because I think it may eliminate the opportunity for some people to run. Um, uh, it's expensive to run for county commission. Sometimes you can spend eight, ten thousand dollars, and if you don't have uh, a lot of contributors, it, it's difficult to do that. So, uh, I would hope that we would leave it alone for now, at least, or at least have the opportunity to continue to weigh in on it as as it moves forward. Uh, I would just make the comment that I also talked with Commissioner Burr, and I was uh, a little hesitant at first, but um, I think the idea behind it was to get more people involved uh, at the board of commissioners level. Uh, so uh, there are some things about it. I think a uh, seven-member board would be a larger board, and uh, that could present its own problems, but I'm okay with that, and uh, I could support it. Uh, but I think we do need to keep the dialogue going, and he has said that this is a work in progress, and he wants input, so not just from us, but from the citizens. So uh, I think we can keep that line of communication open. I would like make a motion to uh, direct staff at this time to contact our legislative de delegation and advise them that we're perfectly happy with the five-member board and like it to be remain right now to be elected at large. Second. So we have a motion to direct staff uh, to contact the legislators to leave it as it is and I have a second. Motion was made by Commissioner Dennis and second by Commissioner Shudo. Any further discussion on the issue? I'm going to vote with that, but I would certainly encourage you to communicate mm -hmm. our discussion here tonight. Uh, I think that the, what we're doing is it's sending the right 
initial communication, but I would also encourage you, Mr. Chairman, to let him know uh, about our conversation tonight and both the pluses and the minuses and so that we are providing and continue, continue to provide that input. I will do that, and I would encourage all of you to, I know uh, Commissioner Dennis and Commissioner uh, uh, Morton and I have talked with uh, Commissioner, with Representative Burr, and I would encourage Commissioner Shido and you to do the same thing, but I will convey that to him. Any further discussion? Hear none. All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Aye. No. Uh, the ayes have it, three to two. Thank you. Our next agenda item is the consent agenda. Uh, in the consent agenda tonight is, are the minutes of our regular meeting on April 15th and our special meeting on April 22nd. Uh, with finance, uh, the acceptance of the nine months ending, uh, our nine months report ending in March 2013. Uh, three budget amendments from the Health Department, EMS, and DSS, and what's the pleasure of the board? I move we accept the consent agenda as presented. I have a motion by Commissioner Dennis and a second by Commissioner Shudo to accept the consent agenda as presented. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. And the ayes have it. We come to the portion of our uh, meeting where we accept uh, comments from the public. Uh, we have a sign up sheet or had one. I only have one name uh, Mike Sawyer, I believe it is. Uh, Mike Snyder. Snyder. Roger Dick must have wrote that for you. I can't read it. <laughs> uh, okay, Mike, uh, you're welcome to come up. And did anybody come in late and didn't get a chance to sign this and wish to speak? If you'd raise your hand. Well, they did not see me speak after the closed session. I would, I would like to. Uh, after the closed session. I thought you were going into the second session. Well, we will, but there won't be an opportunity to speak after that. This is public comment section now. No, this is public comment section. I would Welcome just Mike. like to say uh, that Give us your name and uh, My name is Mike Snyder Where you're from, please, sir I'm, I'm from Albemarle And you've got uh, three minutes like everybody else Thank you <laughs> You're welcome, sir Okay um, I would just like to uh, comment on the uh, The 401k that apparently uh, You have reached an agreement Or nearly have reached an agreement uh, To go ahead and sign off on the 401k um, <coughs> That water is, is, is our most important, if not our only, asset. And I think it's extremely important that you consider and reconsider and make sure that the decision that you're gonna make tonight is one that's gonna benefit the community at large. I think that those of you that will choose to uh, sign off on the agreement <coughs> that I would suggest that history may not be kind for that type of action. And that those of you that would support it, I would say that your legacy would be represented by the courage that you show to try to take a stand to protect an asset for the benefit of this community. And I wish you all the wisdom uh, that can be brought to your meeting tonight to make the right choice. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Anyone else? Comments from the uh, county commissioners, uh, Mr. Dun Commissioner Dunaway. Uh, the only thing I'd say is I think I noticed in the paper where we had a couple of marksman teams, both from Greystone and from Park Ridge, that had won state championships. We often will celebrate the, uh, the football or basketball teams, but I think these these folks probably have worked hard and gotten to that same same level and won. So uh, I would congratulate them and certainly uh, want to encourage and, uh, and congratulate all students that are coming near the end of their their current uh, school year for all the accomplishments they've made during the year. Very good, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Morton. Just one comment. I attended recently the Standard County Ag Tour that was sponsored by the Corporate Extension Office uh, Ag Center, and I was very much impressed by the uh, facilities of the attending, uh, Moody Boots Farm, uh, the Rolling Hills Cotton Gin, and also the Hardy Creek Farms, how much the extension provide service and networking for these people. And each one of these places that we attended, each one of them made a comment about how much cooperation they got and encouragement they got and how much they had relied upon what the extension provided for them. And I just commend the extension for the service they provide to the people of Stanley County. 
Thank you. Commissioner uh, Archuda. I just want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. And um, I know we're going to go back there and talk about the alcohol issue and hopefully we get resolution tonight. I know it's been a six or seven years coming and it's been a divisive issue. So hopefully we can just, whatever we decide tonight, we can just move forward as a county and um, try to recruit more businesses in to, to bring jobs to Stanley County. I know the ERI, that's one of the, one of the businesses that relocated out of the Baden Business Park. They're now up to 66 employees, so that number has continued to grow um, over the last couple of years. So it's jobs and it's paychecks for people, and that's what's important. Thanks, Commissioner. Commissioner Dennis? Yes, I, I put a folder in each one of these things I have to uh, highlight there. It's on the economic contributions. The airport for North Carolina is General Aviation, which there's 72 of them, and uh, the bulk of it is uh, it creates 108,000. Uh, related jobs to that, 26 billion of annual impact and 771 million in direct government revenue. And you get leisure reading what it is. Ours is in there and a whole lot of other stuff, military and everything. So it's uh, good information. It did by the state. Thank you very much for that. Uh, my only comment is I attended the uh, child protection uh, breakfast uh, put on by the Butterfly House uh, recently and. Uh, just amazing to hear some of the statistics of, of the children that uh, need child protection. And we're, we're lucky to have the Butterfly House. Uh, that is a service that if we didn't have, we'd have to go outside the county and pay a great deal for. So I just rec uh, commend those folks for the job that they do. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to go into close, to recess this meeting and go into closed session to consult with the county attorney in accordance with GS 143-318, decimal 11, little a three to discuss the 401 water quality permit intervention and APGI's public records lawsuits, request lawsuit, and to discuss a real estate transaction in accordance with GS 143-318, decimal 11, little a five. And I have to read those numbers, but I have to tell you with this last one, it is a real estate transaction and I must uh, disclose the owner uh, of the property is Stanley Funeral Home. The location is Hill Coast Street in Albemarle adjacent to property owned by the county and the purpose is for EMS Services Center. So I'll entertain a motion to go into closed session for those purposes. I have a motion by Commissioner Shudo and a second by Commissioner Dennis. If all in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed now, no. The ayes have it. We're now in recess and in closed session. <laughs>